Hello guys. How to be happy whether you want Donald Trump to become your next president or not. Big, big, big topic. I want to start off by showing you this chart. Hello. Welcome. I want to start off by showing you, you're from Russia. Awesome. I hope you enjoy the periscope today. So I want to start off by sharing something with you. This is a diagram of the heart. And the one above shows you what it looks like when you're frustrated. And the one below shows you what it looks like when you have feelings of gratitude and appreciation. Very, very, very powerful. I used to do EKGs when I worked for a cardiologist. I used to do about 20 EKGs per day. And I wish back then that I knew the power of the heart. The power of the heart. We always talk about how powerful the mind is, and it is. But the heart is 5,000 times more powerful than the mind. And actually, the heart communicates with the brain in four ways. One is neuro neurologically, and that's through the nerve impulses and the neurons. The second is biochemically, that's through your hormones. The third is um, biophysically, that's the pressure waves. And the fourth is energetically, which is through your electromagnetic waves. Now, what's interesting about that is you control, based on your heart, your heart controls your mind, and your mind controls your body. So... There are people who have certain frustrations over who's going to be president, and that's an event. So that means that you have circumstantial happiness on hold or event-based happiness on hold. If it goes in the direction that you desire, you feel you'll be happy. If it goes in a way that you do not desire, you feel you'll be angry or frustrated. So I'm just here to tell you and show you through this diagram that whichever one you choose affects you. Okay? So you're not going to hurt anybody else but yourself. And so there's actually three different ways that we do this. Because remember, the heart is communicating with the brain at all times through those four ways that I just showed you. Neurologically, biochemically, biophysically, energetically at all times. And based on that communication, it's going to determine how you feel, how you act, how you think regularly. So that is why it is very important to always make sure that you are in control and you're not giving up your control and your happiness to other people and events. So there's three ways in which we do this all the time. The first way we do this is by not loving ourselves. So when we nitpick over ourselves, when we don't love the way we look, when we don't love our lives, when we don't love ourselves, then what we are doing is we're giving away our happiness. We're, uh, we're saying that we have event-based happiness and when the event changes, when our body changes, then we give ourselves the right to be happy. So you give up your happiness. You put your happiness on hold waiting for that event to change. Big mistake. The second way that we give up our happiness and put it on hold is when we're not loving others. That means you're not loving people. You're finding their flaws and you're magnifying their flaws. I don't care if it's Donald Trump. I don't care if it's your spouse. I don't care if it's your co-worker. It has the same effect. It affects you. Look at that diagram again. Look at what it's doing to your heart and how it's changing you physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. You're being affected by it. So Sometimes when you don't have this visual, when you can't see inside of yourself and you can't see the damage that you're causing to yourself, you'll continue that self-destructive behavior. And what will you do? You will blame. So you'll blame Donald Trump. You will blame other people. You'll want somebody or some event on, out, on the outside of you to take the blame for how you feel, but it's damaging to yourself. And the last way that we actually give away our happiness or put it on hold is by not honoring our soul's purpose. So in other words, we all have a purpose. We all have a dream. We all have a desire. We all have something that we're supposed to be attaining. And when we are not honoring that, when we're not expressing that, then this is what the changes that it cause, causes within us as well. 
So now we have anger and frustration and confusion in that area as it relates to our soul's purpose and we're not honoring it. So it's having an effect on us. It's having an effect on our heart, which in turn has an effect on our brain and our thinking and in effect has a, an effect on our, our bodily functions, our actions, our thoughts, our behaviors, our habits, and our lifestyle because it all equates to that bottom line, your life. How are you loving or hating your life? So what's the solution? What in the world can we do? The number one thing that we can do is gain control of our happiness by loving those three things I mentioned, loving yourself, loving others, and loving and honoring your soul's purpose. When you do that, you gain control and you're in the driver's seat of your happiness. You are not waiting for events and you're definitely not waiting for people to determine if you're going to have that happiness or not day by day, moment by moment. So what's your mission assignment? Your mission assignment is important because if you don't have a mission assignment, these are just words that'll fall on deaf ears. These are just words that you'll forget in 24 hours. So we want to make sure that they stick, we, that they have sticking power. And the way that they'll have sticking power is to have a mission assignment, something that you physically do to cause it to stick to you, to cause it to go down deep into the subconscious part of the brain and not just the conscious part of the brain that causes it to become more of a habit for you. And so your mission assignment today is anytime you allow people or events to make you angry, I want you to picture this EKG that you're looking at right now. That's all I want you to do, a very simple mission assignment. Anytime you feel angry because of people or events, I want this image to pop up in your brain. I want this image to show up loud and clear where you see the damage that you're doing to yourself. I'm Joy, founder of R3 Method, body and mind detox coach, author of R3 Diet. And the goal is to reverse, retrain, rebuild your body and mind. And it starts with you. Until next time, R3 for life. Bye.